Let's take a quick check on how the currency markets are faring at this moment. Dollar again very much in focus. As you can see, the dollar uh, pulling back uh, slightly at this moment, but pretty much hovering at seven-month highs against the Japanese yen. Of course, the yen getting quite weaker. A lot of analysts looking for a much weaker yen as we flip the calendar. Euro dollar just above 135 as we speak. Plenty to talk about with Mario Singh, co-founder and CEO at FX1 Academy. Hope you had a great extended weekend. All right, let's talk about the host of currency bank meetings that we're expecting this week. Which ones are you looking out for? Which ones will surprise us? Well, I think there's about three or four um, um, central banks who are meeting this week. I think it's going to be game on for the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia. Um, numbers are printed at 4%, and I think expectation is going at 4.25% tomorrow. There's a few things that's going on as to why they might raise. There's, I think there's going to be an even tussle between um, economists as to why they should raise or why they shouldn't raise. But what I think is the biggest news that's going to push Glenn Stevens to make that rate call tomorrow is because their uh, raw material prices, uh, in, in particular iron ore and coal right. prices, they have risen really um, over the roof. Yeah. So because those are some of the biggest exports for Australia, I feel that's going to push it um, across the line. They're going to raise it to 4.25% tomorrow. Tomorrow. Your call is for tomorrow. There is just so much risk appetite, especially after the payrolls number. What was interesting late last week was how the Swiss National Bank surprised the markets by intervening, especially as that currency gets a little frothy. Do you think as this thirst for commodities you know, fuels so much demand into all things Aussie, uh, do you think the RBA could actually set the floor at some point? They try to could. lift, try to cap the, the, the Aussie dollar's rise? They possibly could, but I still feel tomorrow is going to be at 4.25%. They would cap it. Now, let's assuming that Glenn Stevens raises it tomorrow, I would see that as a, um, as a, as a holding point at 4.25%, at least for the next few months, so that they can let the monetary policies actually play out. Um, they started the raise, uh, raising the raise possibly, I think, somewhere in October last year. And we are looking, actually, looking at the effects of that. We are seeing retail sales and building approvals actually dipping now. Uh, but having said that bearing in mind also because retail sales actually account for more than 50% of the Australian output. So these are numbers that Glenn Stevens has possibly got to crunch, but, but when push comes to shove, I still feel on export perspective that I still feel at 4.25%, he would push it through. Assuming that happens, it would be a flaw at some point. For the next few months, it will be stagnant. And uh, let's talk about Guy Thurman and uh, postponing this uh, yeah. biannual, biannual wise reform, a, a wise move, but ultimately it's still on hold. It is. It is on hold. I still feel this whole tussle between the U.S. and, the, and, and China raising their, their, the appreciation of the yuan, I still feel China has got to play it on their own terms. The U.S. has got to get that. Um, I don't think it's going to be a wise move if the U.S. on April 15 were to actually officially label China as a currency manipulator. It's not going to do good for their business. And some interesting weekend comments from now to Khan, especially after that meeting with the Chinese leaders saying, uh, saying you know, the China needs to take a decisive action. But will the Chinese le listen to the Japanese? I mean, after all, their argument is... Look at what you did after the Plaza Accord, and look how everything went downhill. Absolutely. Well, I think that they're trying to get some uh, some support on, on 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 the Asian side, but I still feel uh, uh, where China is concerned, they've got to do it in their own terms. They're going to see some uh, their exports have got to play out. Their domestic demand has got to increase. The unemployment figures has got to come down. So I still feel that while they would raise the uh, the appreciation of the yuan at least in the next few months, I don't see the rate rise to be next high. Next few months. Next few months, they possibly would move towards a managed float. A yes. trade deficit for March. So yes. I, wouldn't that sort of delay whatever plans they had? That is a good point for, for, for the Chinese to say that, yes, the, the plans will be delayed, but I still feel with all the pressure, they just might. But it's got to be on their own terms. They've got to see that, hey, this is my decision. I want to do it my own terms. I'm not going to cave in on external pressure. The yen, um, our earlier, some of our uh, analysts, some of our uh, Forex uh, dealers were talking, looking at 100 even within three to six months down the road. Is that something that's on your radar? Um, I'm just a little bit more conservative. While I still feel the dollar yen is playing possibly among all the majors, it is the one that's really riding the best on U.S. fundamentals. And it has skyrocketed above 94 um, on, on the back of the NFP last, uh, last Friday. Um, I don't see it hitting to 100. I'm possibly seeing it uh, just below 100, and then there's going to be a pullback again. Um, I don't feel that the, uh, the U.S. is going to be taking on just too much risk at this point. Traders would still be applying most of their cash. The hot money is still going to be on the commodities, on the Aussie, the Kiwi, and the, and the Looney. I see. And we've got also plenty of data to look out for as well. Which ones do you think will give us more of a sense of direction as to where the dollar will go aside from the central bank meetings this week? 
Well, that's going to be the chief one. We're going to, um, I'm going to possibly be looking at whether uh, Bernanke has certain uh, hawkish tones in, in his FOMC minutes. report. Yes, uh, the, the minutes is going to be happening um, early this week, actually. But uh, prior to saying that, even tonight, if I'm looking at the ISM manufacturing uh, report, uh, if that's going to be heading upwards, it's going to be a good deal um, of data that's coming up. The risk, uh, risk appetite will be returning. So tonight's uh, reports on the ISM non-manufacturing um, for service numbers, that is possibly going to be something that traders, including myself, will be looking at tonight. So how far will the dollar go by the end of this week then? I feel there will be continuation, especially since it was a blowout number of 162,000 on the NFP. Mm. Um, that was pretty, pretty high. I feel market sentiment will push it through. I feel the dollar rising just about, um, just slightly under a percent more against all the other majors. Okay, will do. Thank you so much.